Okay, so the chain rule for E functions and natural log functions. It's similar, you can think of it as the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside, but um, the E function rule, if you have something a little more complicated than just X, you have to deal with it with the chain rule. So we know that the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. It's one of the easiest rules that we have. But what is the derivative of e to the x cubed plus 2? Well, similar to the chain rule, you're going to say, okay, let's just pretend this is e to the u. So the derivative of e to the u is e to the u. Okay, so that, but that's only part one. Then you have to take the derivative of that power, which would be 3x squared. So that's the chain rule for E functions. If you write it out as a rule, it's going to look like this. If you have um, some function E to the G of X, that just means that it's more complicated than X then it's going to be the derivative of the power times just e to the g of x. Now I wrote my derivative of the power on the right, you could just as easily write it on the left. All right, let's see what else we got. So that's just what I said. So e to the 3, y equals e to the th x cubed plus 2. The derivative is the mul you're going to have just write down the e function e to the x cubed plus 2 times the derivative of the power which is 3x squared. So here I've got it written in the front. It doesn't matter whether which side you put it on. Okay, so here is an example. So you want to think of this chain rule and you're going to think of this as 3 e to the u first. So the derivative of 3e e to the u is 3e e to the u. But then you have to deal with that u. Okay, so this derivative, there's two pieces to the chain rule, is 3e e to the x squared minus 4x, notice how I didn't take the derivative up there, times the derivative of the power, which is 2x minus 4. Let's look at another one. Oh boy. This is a complicated one and it's not necessarily because of the E. I like this one because it gives me a chance to say a lot of things. So the first thing is um, you can't have a radical so let's just rewrite this without a radical using our rational exponent. So this is four times so there's still four times and then this cube root of x squared is x to the two-thirds. No need to put parentheses of the one there. There's already exponent two there. And then e to the two x to the negative three minus x to the negative one. So all I did was rewrite. So we started with y equals four times the cube root of x squared times e to the two x to the negative three minus x to the negative one. And we got y equals four times x to the two-thirds e to the 2x, 2x to the negative 3 minus x to the negative 1. So we didn't take a derivative, we just rewrote. Now, as often happens with e functions, there's no parentheses needed. And that trips students up. And so you have to see that this, this you can think of this one as a product and this one as a product. And I like to put this coefficient 4 with with the power because it's easy to deal with. So I'm going to use the product rule here. Even though we didn't have parentheses, it's a product. You have to know to put the parentheses in there. Okay, so the product rule is the, is the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. So 
the derivative of y with respect to x would be the first, so 4x to 2 thirds times the derivative of the second. Now, that's all a power, so the chain rule for e functions is you write the e function, so e to the 2x to the negative 3 minus x to the negative 1 times the derivative of that power, which would be negative 6x to the negative 4 plus x to the negative 2. So 2x to the negative 3, 2 times negative 3 is negative 6, reduce that by 1, so that's where, where I got negative 6x to the negative 4. Then you have a minus x to the negative 1, so that's another term. So negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1, and then reduce that negative 1 by 1, so that's how I got positive 1x to the negative 2. Okay, so by the time I do all this, I've forgotten what I'm, I've done. It's the other reason why I like to write the product rule down. So I've done the first, and I've done the derivative of the second, plus the second, e to the 2x to the negative 3 minus x to the negative 1, times, I'm running out of room, okay, the derivative of the first, 4 times x to the 2 thirds. So 4 times 2 thirds is 8 thirds x to the minus 3 over 3 would be negative 1 third. Okay, so there's a lot of things I can say about this one. So first was we had to rewrite using rational exponents, then we reviewed the chain rule for e functions, and then right here, so many people are not comfortable with function, fractions, so they, they might put uh, 4 times 2 thirds and get 2.667. I'm going to count that wrong. This 2.667 is not right because it's not exact. You'll get a rounding error. You don't want to do that. You want to be okay with Im improper fractions. That's mandatory. So we don't want to round. All right, so that's the end of that one. Okay, now let's look at the chain rule for natural logs. So um, how do you differentiate something like y equals the natural log parentheses x cubed plus 2? Well, you have to remember what is the derivative of just ln of x. And the derivative of ln of x is just 1 over x. That's not a rewrite, that's a derivative. So many people get a little confused with that. The derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x. So with, if you have something other than x in the natural log parentheses, you're going to need to use the chain rule for natural log. So this one, y equals natural log of x cubed plus 2, very similar to what we do with e functions, you're going to think of this as natural log of u. So the derivative of natural log of u is 1 over u. So the derivative of natural log of x cubed plus 2 is 1 over x cubed plus 2. But then we have to deal with the derivative of the inside. So now we're going to multiply this times the derivative of x cubed plus 2, which would be 3x squared. Now, if you think about it, we can simplify. If you put that over 1, you can see that 1 times 3x squared is 3x squared in the numerator over x cubed plus 2. So you can leave it either way, but sometimes when you see the answer key, it looks like this, 3x squared over x cubed plus 2, and people are like, how did that happen? Well, it's you can, you can write it um, that way. So let me show you what I mean. So, look, so if I have y equals the natural log of something, f of x, something that's more complicated than u, it's 1 over f of x times the derivative of f of x, the inside. Or you can think of it as f prime of x over f of x. I kind of prefer this, but it doesn't matter. So let's practice um, this one. Okay, so we have f of x equals the natural log of something complicated. So what the rule is, the chain rule for natural logs, it's going to be 1 over this argument that's inside here, 3x squared minus 4x plus 5, notice how I didn't change it, times 
the derivative, so this time I'm just going to sneak it up here, the derivative of 3x squared is 6x, and the derivative of minus 4x is minus 4. So we have 1 over the, the inside unchanged times the derivative of the inside. Right. Let's look at this one. Oh, this one has uh, a natural log and an E function as a quotient. And so, so sometimes people think, well, I'm never ever going to use the quotient rule. I'm going to rewrite this using negative exponents. But this would be a bad idea. You don't want to rewrite this with negative exponents. So you're pretty much stuck with the quotient rule on this one. Um, so the quotient rule is the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom over the bottom squared. So this one, we're going to have to, as you can guess, use some chain rule. But let's start with the quotient rule. So the derivative f of prime of x of this quotient it would be the bottom, which is e to the 4x squared minus 5. I'm putting parentheses around it. Times the derivative of the top, here we go, which is a natural log with a something other than just x. So that this is 1 over 3x minus 6 times the derivative of 3x minus 6, which is 3. So bottom times the deriv derivative of the top minus the top which is natural log of 3x minus 6, times the derivative of the bottom, which is an e function. So that's going to be e to the 4x squared minus 5. You just write that e function over again, times the derivative of the power, which would be 8x. So we have the bottom, e to the 4x squared minus 5, times the derivative of the top, 1 over 3x minus 6 times 3 minus the top, natural log of 3x minus 6 times the derivative of the bottom, which is e to the 4x squared minus 5 times 8x, all of that over e to the 4x squared minus 5 to the second power. My cat. And you don't have to distribute that or anything. All right, now this gives me a chance to talk about when do you use the product rule and when do you not use the product rule. Um, this typically comes up with E functions, so I'm going to go on a tangent here for just a second. So if you have 3E to the 4X plus 2 versus 3XE to the 4X plus 2, one of these needs the product rule and one of them does not need the product rule. And it's this little x. See, people learn, they learn your brain tells you the wrong thing. They say, okay, I'm going to use the product rule when I see a pair of parentheses. And that's not the product rule. The product rule is when you have a product. And so this x makes this 3x something that's more complicated than just a constant. It's a variable expression. So this one you would need to use um, the product rule. And you can f help your brain by just putting parentheses around it. Okay, But this one, this 3, is just a constant. And constants just get to come on down. So this one I would not use the product rule. I would just say, okay, 3 times, and then I would take this derivative. Constants just get to come on down. So that would be e to the 4x plus 2 times the derivative of that power, which is 4. And you can simplify the 3 times the e to this power times 4. You can take the 3 times the 4. That's 12. And you do not need to use the product rule because it's just a constant. But as soon as I put an x in there with the 3, that's going to need the product rule. So this one would be first 3x times the derivative of the second, which is 4e to the 4x plus 2, plus the second e to the 4x plus 2 times the derivative of the first. So I just wanted to point that out. Okay, so now you are on the lookout for constants. If it's a constant, it's not going to need to be the product rule. Negative 3 times the natural log of this, yeah, it is 
um, a product, but it's it, this negative three is a constant. Okay. Now the other thing I wanted to tell you uh, about natural logs is it's really helpful if you remember something from out al from algebra, math 171, and it's the power rule. So I'm just going all over, and I'm going to tell you about the power rule for logs. You may remember it once we write it down. So if you have a log of any base, log base B, of x to the p power, you can take that p, that power, and multiply it to the front of the log. So for example, if you had the log base 3 of x to the fourth power, that's the same as the 4 times the log base 3 of x. And it could be any base. So if you had the natural log of um, m to the third power, that natural log has base e, right? that is the same thing as 3 times the natural log of m. So the power rule for logs is going to make this a lot easier. So this, what I mean is you can just rewrite this. You can, before you take a derivative, you can say, oh, I have a, a power. And by the property of the power rule for logs, I can take that 4 and put it in the front and multiply it with that negative 3. And that's going to make your life a whole lot easier. So then you can take the derivative using the natural log rule. So the negative 12, that constant comes on down. It's not, you don't need to use the product rule. And then the derivative of the natural log is 1 over whatever's in that argument there times the derivative of the inside, which would be 6x squared minus 4. Now, if you did not remember that you could take this 4 and mo multiply it to this negative 3, here's what it would look like. You would have negative 3, constant comes on down, 1 over, times 1 over this whole thing, 2x cubed minus 4x to the 4th power. Then you have to take the derivative of that, which would uh, mean you use the chain rule, so you, this u to the fourth, you're taking this derivative right here, would be 4u, which is 2x cubed minus 4x to the third, times the derivative of the inside, which is 6x minus 4. See how much more complicated that is? But if you look at it very carefully, you can see that it's the same. So I don't like when we simplify, but I do want this time you to see that it's the same. So negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. Um, I think I lost an exponent now that I'm checking my work. I forgot the 2 right here. The derivative of 2x cubed is 6x squared. Okay, so now I'm checking your work. There's that 6x squared. There it is. Okay, so that's there. So the only thing that's left is here. And so 1 over 2x cubed minus 4x to the 4th times 2x cubed minus 4x to the 3rd. See how the, all three of these cancel and there's just one. So th these are equivalent, but this is a whole lot easier if you remember the power rule for logarithms. You can multiply that power to whatever's in the front, and th that's a rewrite. It's not a derivative. It's just a little algebra, and then take the derivative. Okay, so we have, if you have a function other than just one number, it's the chain rule. So you're going to take the derivative of the outside where you just think that's one thing and that's going to be n times that thing unchanged to the n minus 1 times the derivative of the inside. If you have an e function, e to the f, x, f of x, that's going to be e to the f of x times the derivative of that power. And if you have a natural log of something more complicated than just x, it's going to be 1 over that function, unchanged, times the derivative of that function. So the way that's written here, you can do it this way if you want. Separate it out. doesn't matter. Okay, so that's uh, the end of the chain rule.